Berm Park opens in less than a month, and so a lot is happening between now and then. Everything kind of sat there in the winter getting rained and snowed on, so the trails are getting buffed out and finalized for the grand opening. I'm working on a what to expect video for anyone visiting. In the meantime, we're installing these trailhead repair stations in a few locations around the park, and I'm going to show you how we do that. The stations were provided by Park Tool Company, the maker of these blue-handled bike tools you probably see everywhere, including my shop. Park Tool Company sponsored the Green Trail at Berm Park, which is a super easy loop with little bridges and rollers, suitable for beginners, and of course, kids whose parents managed to drag them up there. The trail is called Chain Whip, and it runs in a continuous loop right at the trailhead. Here to help me install these trailhead repair stations are YouTube celebrities Calvin and Truman. You might recognize them. All of this to retain the chain, it didn't matter how much it was slapping, it would be retained on the front and when they start pedaling, it would be power transfer. Before we can install these repair stations, we need to pour footings to mount to. So for starters, we're copying the bolt pattern of the repair stand base onto a piece of sheet metal. This will serve as a template. So as long as we line up the bolt holes here, that's the concept. We're calling it the THST. See if you can guess what that stands for. From here, we need to haul a bunch of tools, concrete mix, sono tubes, and water up to Berm Park so we can end the day with something to mount these stations to. If we put it anywhere out there, there's no more trails back that way. There's not going to be people riding by really fast. After deliberating on the exact location of each sand, we clear away the topsoil and bust out that auger I showed you last week. So with my particular auger, I don't know how much luck we'd have with pot rock or roots, but this looks like it was excavated at some point, so it should be a pretty eh, easy drill. Oh man, perfect like a So you may be surprised to discover that the 8-inch auger is perfect for an 8-inch Sonotube. Now, Sonotube is actually a name brand, but it's like the Kleenex of cylindrical concrete forms. You put one of these forms where you want your footing, backfill it, and then fill it with concrete. You're then left with a perfect appearance grade footing to build on. I usually just pour concrete mix in a hole and poke at it with a stick. But this is kind of important, so we're mixing it up proper. We're using gasoline because it leaves a nice finish and evaporates quickly. Just kidding. This is water. And these new 5-gallon cans will eventually be used for fuel once they dry out. So this piece here is squared, same as the base of the trailhead station, that are going to go inside quick crete. So we're going to let it set up, and then when it gets a little bit more firm, we're going to push those bolts in there and get them lined up so that tomorrow we can come back with the trailhead repair station, just bolt them down. Now the trick here is to wait for the mix to just start setting, and then line up the bolts for mounting. This is where the THST comes in. The mix hardens around the bolts, and then we can reuse the template for the next footing. This is about all we can do today since the concrete needs to fully set before we can bolt anything down to it. Knowing there'd be little to do after pouring the footings, we came prepared. So now we're gonna go for a ride, try and beat the clock, try and find a place that will still sell us some food before they close. When I visited Park Tool a few summers ago, these guys showed me all around. So it was great to be able to return the favor, and we even finished in time to find some really good food. This place is crazy. Today, we'll actually install the repair stations, but one of them is custom made to be a lot shorter than the others so kids can reach it. We're setting it up with real bike tools as well as a few others just to make it fun. And to make it clear that this stand is a little bit different from the other ones, I'm making a custom label for it. We're also adding some camera mounts to the stand, so people can use it to make memories. 
custom short upright. So that's the shorter one. This is the shorter one. And let's see if, if it fits. Our, our, all our work yesterday comes through. Hey, that ain't bad. The cardboard forms kind of soak with water and just fall off, leaving a nice footing with bolts sticking out the top. And thanks to our template, the bases line right up. This is the stand we mounted lower for kids. This should be at the right height for anything up to a 24 inch wheel. And parents can mount their action camera or phone to the stand to get a time lapse or video of their kid enjoying it. It's kind of gimmicky, but the stand itself is anything but. I think kids are gonna have a lot of fun with this. So let's have a closer look at these bike repair stations, starting with the setup. We'll address what everybody's already thinking. I can read your minds. There's this plate here, and on the plate, there are these little kind of fingers sticking out. That's where you put the tools, and you actually get to choose where the tools go. And if you want to switch it out for a different tool, you can just get a little crimp from the hardware store, and it's going to work. But of course, these stands come with a bunch of tools that you might need at the bike park, minus the tools that you could use to take the stand apart. It doesn't have those. These two bike grip looking thingies are where you hang your bike from to work on it, to get the wheels off the ground so you can pedal it and everything. And you put it up there like this, derailleur side out. And so the front of your bike is always gonna be over here, and the back of your bike's always gonna be over here. Tools that you would normally use at the front of the bike should be on this side of the stand, and vice versa. At a bike park, you take a little spill, your handlebars move, you're gonna need Allen keys up at the front most of the time. We take our multi-tool and we'll hang it way up here at the front. Pedal wrench, that's probably closer to the back of the bike, so we'll put it on this side. Phillips head screwdriver, unless you're taking off reflectors, you're using this to adjust the limit screws on a derailleur, and so we will put this at the back. So, torques, actually a lot of SRAM stuff has torques up at the front, T25, and so we'll put it up near the front. So now, all of our tools are organized how we want them, if they were. Cover goes up here with some security screws. Now, like I said, this is held on with security bolts, and none of the tools on the stand can be used to disassemble it, right? They, they thought that through. Let's say there was a greenway in a city. Stuff is gonna get stolen, right? Even if it doesn't get stolen the first few months, some idiot's gonna come by with a diagonal cutter and cut one of these off. If you climb this mountain with a pair of diagonal cutters to steal used bike tools that have been sitting out in the rain, you are truly depraved. And if somebody catches you doing it, by the way, around here, they're not gonna be happy with you at all. Think twice before you do that. So the location is extremely important. I put an entire shop worth of tools at the ranger station, and guests could easily walk away with them and I'd have very little idea who did it. But nobody steals tools at the ranger station. If instead of the ranger station, I put these tools in, let's say, Central Park, they'd walk away pretty quickly. So location is kind of important. I have no doubt that someday Burn Park will suffer the loss of a rusty tire lever or screwdriver. And you can rest assured that the thief will receive no attention for it. The other 99.9% .9 of the time, visitors can rely on these stations to straighten out their bars or tighten something that shook loose during their run. We'll be adding an outdoor pump to the trailhead too, so you'll pretty much be able to leave all your stuff at the car and ride worry-free. That's the idea. Thanks to Park Tool Company for making such an awesome contribution to Burn Park. The kid trail, the repair stations, and the custom shorty repair station will usher in a new generation of riders who learn how to wrench on their own bikes. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.